Hey Alpha fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, we're going to go over that just a massive continuation of the Bitcoin chart just sideways and down on that falling uh, wedge. Guys, I do want to remind you that uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we are going to have inflation data. If it's uh, lower than the uh, forecast, then you're going to probably be in okay shape. Uh, if it's higher, then perhaps the markets could take a tumble now they could tumble just because uh, you know the the markets are very enthusiastic right now and it may be time for a pullback anyway okay like the stock market is really topped out guys but uh, you know if we do get good news then maybe it could just push a little bit further or maybe even get embed embedded in that bullishness um, so we have to just be very nimble uh, you know tomorrow and Wednesday because we're not really sure what the market attitude is a lot of this movement uh, in the stock market in particular is based upon just a few companies especially those AI companies and so it just uh, we we really haven't been in this position in a long time where the entire market is being held up by a few companies is it time for them to pull back or not I don't know guys uh, that's a really big question and also uh, you know usually before these falling wedges uh, you know tend to pop back up they do tend to have a fake out to the downside so here we are just in uh, Bitcoin's uh, perpetual wedge here that we've been in ever since uh, really since uh, middle of March and um, gosh it's it's almost three months now that we've just been going uh, sideways a lot of people like to make a big deal about this uh, I just you know there's always this uh, this guy on uh, you know uh, YouTube who's just always continuously bearish if his indicators are bearish you know it doesn't really make sense it's like his theory of the market is all based on his indicators uh, it's just ridiculous uh, and you know talking about like how much we've fallen from here right we've fallen oh my gosh 20 percent but in reality we have to look at the beginning of the formation to the end of the formation and if you look at the beginning of the formation we were like pretty much right here and where are we right now we're just uh, three percent down guys okay three percent down from the beginning of the formation to where we currently are in the formation now you guys may understand that if we're talking about you know like uh, heads and shoulders right or if we're talking about wedges or if we're talking about any type of uh, price action you know we have to be a little bit more uh, you know centered and grounded in our expectations you know the, the patterns are going to play out OK, like this is just market psychology. And, you know, if you're going to freak out just because a pattern is playing out, then you're going to end up shaking yourself out of the market when the measured move plays out, you know, to grab the liquidity up here. And then, you know, we don't know if it's going to continue up or if it's going to you know, pull back at that point. It could be a lower high or it could end up having momentum uh, to the upside. But this pattern has a measured move to the upside okay and in 70 percent uh you know of the cases now does that mean that we can't get a drop to the downside no absolutely we can okay so uh you know usually the way that these uh wedges play out is like a five tap and a fake out and then a breakout okay it, it just tends to work out like that and you can see this isn't the most uh you know this isn't the greatest one over here it's just kind of like a pseudo one this is a much more classic one but even here you know you have the kind of tap out and the fake out and then you know the you know, it just skyrocketed from there. So, you know, if you were just looking at this price action and you were saying, oh no, you know, the price came all the way down 22%. It's, it's game over, man, game over, right? Then you would have missed out on, you know, 60% to the upside. Okay, so, you know, these doom boys, you know, just who are always constantly being doom boys just because their indicator turned red, you know, it used to be green and now suddenly it's red and then the next day it's green again and they change their opinion again, right? These guys are kind of uh, a little bit wacky. You have to have a theory of the market. Uh, from what I'm seeing, you know, I don't see that our legs have been kicked out from underneath us. Uh, I am concerned that the stock market is being held up by just a few stocks. I am a little bit iffy about what's going to happen 
um, if the uh, recession really ramps up and if the Fed does increase rates again, that could just accelerate the recession, which could accelerate pullbacks, okay? Which could accelerate uh, us to the downside. But in our current orientation, if the Fed pauses and if the market starts cycling from that kind of tech AI kind of narrative and if money starts cycling into other um, you know, parts of the market and those other parts of the market start catching up with the AI, even if the AI is having a pullback, okay? That's going to be a really healthy behavior. Normally, if you're going to get a market crash, you're going to see those market leaders pull back, but the rest of the market doesn't catch up. It doesn't move back up. But if we start seeing, um, you know, sector cycling in the stock market where, you know, whatever, consumer goods or whatever, you know, starts cycling up to kind of replace that spot of AI, that's a very healthy trait of the market. And if the Fed uh, takes a pause in interest rates and if that CPI and PPI data are, you know, kind of neutral or better than expected, then, yeah, I mean, maybe we could have a little bit of, you know, um, you know, a little bit of a pullback just, you know, just normally and then maybe we continue on our way, at least to the measured move, um, which would be the statistical likelihood, okay? I'm not saying it has to happen. I'm just saying it's the statistical likelihood. And that's what, uh, you know, that's what I would be looking forward to. I'm not going to be panicking down here at uh, 23 to 21,000. I'm going to be seeing this as a potential buying opportunity. And then we can talk about, um, you know, whether or not whether or not this is going to end up continuing to tip over, okay? Because I'm not so sure that it is just based upon the current status of things in the market. And, you know, I love the enthusiasm of all the Doom Boys and everything, but, I mean, gosh, guys, they, you know, they didn't want to believe that we were going to pump up here either, okay? And we've just been absolutely killing it, so... You saw my arrow over there. I was reviewing, you know, when we were looking at coming into the into the uh, market here. And for you, those of you who know my channel, you know that I use uh, momentum pools. And I was looking at uh, the past momentum pools that I had down in this area. And you know, this is what we longed off of. Okay, like this is literally when I was creating the theory of the momentum pools, and it was telling me to long here and. I didn't really know, I didn't really have a fixed system yet, but I had uh, volatility lines, I had momentum lines, everything was just mapping out this area and we flipped it, we held onto it, and then we just skyrocketed off of it. And that's when I said, aha, you know, I've got something here. I need to figure out how to refine this. And we've just been refining that trade system ever since. So let's go ahead and just uh, jump uh, to the one hour. Well, first let's just, uh, just you know reflect on where we are in this wedge. We're just literally dead center, okay? So here's the dead middle of this, this wedge and we're literally just in the dead middle, okay? So yeah, if we pump up, maybe we're gonna grab the top here at 26, you know, it would be kind of uh, bullish, I think, if we got above 26,300. And then, you know, maybe we could be talking about that attempting to flip that 27,000. If we get hard rejected off of that, then maybe come, we come all the way back down. And if we lose this a 25,9, just on the structural basis, then maybe we retest the lows here. You know, especially if we lose 25,6, let's say, then maybe we retest the lows. 25.4, you know, 25.2, something like this, and, you know, have another chance or whatnot. Yeah, these things can just kind of drive you nuts at the end here. Normally, um, not only do these things have a 70% chance of um, eventually uh, going to the upside, but they also tend to break 70% uh, through the actual pattern itself. So we're getting pretty long in the tooth in this pattern, and I would expect, you know, this week is a very good candidate for us to be, you know, either doing a fake out down or a fake out up, and then, you know, or 
or the actual move itself. And so we just have to be on high alert, okay, in the next couple weeks. Just be on high alert, guys, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and um, go to that one hour chart. And let's take off this uh, wedge. We're all pretty familiar with this by now. Let's go ahead and put on these uh, one hour momentum and pivot lines that I have for us. And you can see that although we're checking back to the volatility pivot, we seem to be in relatively uh, good shape here. Now, relative in the sense that we're above the volatility pivot right now, and we're just inside the momentum pool. Now, could we come all the way back down to the Bollinger Bands midline, where we've kind of been, you know, just oscillating around it, right? It's kind of getting a little bit of an undulation there. And could we do that again? Yeah, sure. You know, no problem. Could we even wick down to the bearish control zone? Yeah, why not? Okay, like this is very par for the course, okay, in terms of Bitcoin on this uh, one hour just for the last, you know, however many hourly candles. But, but at least we have to be prepared for the upside, which is to say that while all of these structures, you know, you can see they have pretty fast movements up and down, right? Okay, pretty fast movements. It's pretty consistent. There's no real hiccups. There may be a little bit of a hiccup here, right? And what we're seeing right here is we're getting a, uh, a higher low, and we just got a higher high off of this one, right? And off of this little area right here. And we're getting a little bit of a higher low uh, from here to here to here. And so we do have the making of a possible uptrend right here. And so I just can't count that out. And should we be able to maintain above the volatility pivot on a closing basis, like maybe we wick down here or something stupid, right? But we get back up into that momentum pool and end up closing above this volatility pivot or at least above the neutral point of control and make yet another higher low there, then I'm going to say, yeah, this thing has a chance, okay, of getting into the bullish control zone and getting itself embedded above the momentum pool and around that bullish control zone. And this thing could end up doing something interesting Okay, and maybe trying for that 26, uh, 300, maybe even uh, higher. Okay, guys, so just be aware that we are getting a little bit of this kind of grind to the upside. Now, that's not, you know, the end all be all everything. You can see this type of behavior, uh, you know, it tends to happen like that and it just ends up becoming essentially a bear flag okay so here's the here's the measured move off of this bear flag and oh look yeah we hit the measured move okay so do we do that again and we just break down well that's why we have the neutral point of control and that's why we have the bearish control zone if you start seeing us breaking that bearish control zone 25,632 right or start chopping around there and you know really testing it on the bottom side then you know to get out, okay? Because we are we might be breaking the structure over here. Uh, if we get flipped back on top of it, and then you you know we're probably going to retest to the neutral point of control. And, you know, if we uh, hang on above the volatility pivot here, especially if we um, get on top of the uh, momentum pull here above this hold momentum, then we're just going to maintain our momentum to the upside and we're in a really good position to capture that bullish control zone. So those are the two scenarios uh, that are possible other, other than that sideways chop. But the key point is that you have the key levels for it, guys, okay? You have the key levels for it if you're doing these kind of short-term trades and you know you want to just have something, some kind of a line in the sand, then uh, I'm going to give you the bullish control zone at 26,104. I'm going to give you the top of the momentum pool at 26,060. The bottom of the momentum pool, super critical one, because it corresponds with the volatility pivot at 25,960. You want to hold above that if, you wanna, if you're going to be bullish. Your first warning that something's uh, potentially wrong is if we cross 25,914 and lose the neutral point of control on the one hour chart. 
And then it's too rich for my blood uh, in terms of the uh, upside if we're under 25,632. Obviously, we will have broken that low over here. Okay? So, you know, there you go for the one hour for you guys who are, you know, kind of sniping these, uh, these, these lower time frames. Uh, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at how we did on the, you know, on uh, one of these uh, previous uh, six hour charts. So here's the, uh, here's the previous six hour chart that we were looking at, or at least one of them there. Oops, that's locked. And you can see that we've basically just been grinding around, right, in that uh, momentum pool. So what do I say about, you know, being inside of the momentum pool? It's just sideways. It's just neutral. There's, no, there's nothing good or bad about it. Uh, obviously, we, we didn't break down from the bearish control zone. So this was super helpful to know because if we had closed some candles under there, then we should have been worried. But we didn't have to be worried because we held above the bearish control zone. We, you know, kept moving around the momentum pool, which is totally neutral. Now, we never really closed on top of it. We didn't get any candles on top of it, right? So we didn't, like, get, like, a four-hour candle, like, sitting on top of it. And we didn't flip the uh, Bollinger Band midline here, okay? So we didn't get embedded above the Bollinger Band's midline. So nothing bullish there. So what was this? This was just a classic kind of neutral kind of continuation sideways uh, you know, play. And, you know, what, you know, what could have we considered in terms of trading? Well, if we went down to the lower time frames, let's take this to like uh, the 15 minute, okay? For you sniper guys. Let's say that uh, we had the uh, six hour momentum pool here. Well, every time, I, I just pay attention to this. Every time we broke into the momentum pool, we went to the other side. We got back into the momentum pool, we went to the other side. Broke down, went to the other side. Got back in, went to the other side. Broke down, went to the other side. You know, held on to it basically, you know, went to the other side, 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 went to the other side. The other side. And then what? We broke on top of it. And now, for the first time, we're like uh, putting some price action up there again, kind of like a retest of this, retest of this. You know, both of these were failures to get to the neutral point of control. But here's the key point. If you were trading on the on the 15 minute, right, on the five minute or the 15 minute as a leverage trader, well, then this six hour momentum pool would have been. I mean, extremely reliable. You can see that everything on top of the pool was not reliable, okay? All of this was just not reliable. Everything below it was not reliable, okay? But look at how reliable that pool was. And this is the difference between where people are using support and resistance and uh, using my momentum pools. My momentum pools are like a sure bet, right? an extremely high hit rate with extremely controlled boundaries that you can mark out in advance. Now, sometimes they're going to push up. Okay, well, you got the long. Okay, sometimes they're going to break down. Well, okay, you got the short. But if we're just going to go sideways, then you know, as soon as we break back in, it's most likely going to go to the other side. It's just how it tends to work out. Okay, we just trade level to level on these uh, momentum pools here, on these key levels. So let's go over to the uh, the new chart because this was the old uh, six hour chart. I just wanted to show you what a sideways uh, price action chart looks like. They basically pivot around the, le the key levels that I give you, which means that trading between them is very, very reliable. You understand the implication of that? If they pivot around the lines, then trading between the lines is extremely reliable. Well, here's the uh, new the new key levels to watch on the six hour. And you can see, right, this last six hour, we kind of pumped into the zone, flipped on top of the uh, new momentum pool. 
And almost immediately, we went to the neutral point of control. We got rejected there, so we're testing out the pool again. If we break into the pool, you can expect that we could get to the bottom. Now, the boundaries of the pool are 25,906 and 25,817, with a higher bias to the upside if we're above 25,832, that volatility pivot. Okay. We don't, we're not in danger of becoming embedded in the bearish control zone unless we're below 25,569. But we're nowhere near the bullish control zone above 26,956, basically 27,000. Okay, to really get this chart moving. But if we get embedded above the Bollinger Bands uh, midline up here and we're able to flip the neutral point of control, then we have a really good shot at taking out that bullish control zone. Because this thing could just, just pull us up, guys. Okay, it could just pull us up. And we're going to have the volatility pivot and the momentum pool at our back. So that means we're going to have volatility and momentum pushing us in the upward direction while we're entering the bullish side of the chart. And that's the logic, right, that I have here for you guys. So you wouldn't be you wouldn't be shorting up here, okay? Like uh, your chance to short is like down here, okay? Hope that makes sense for you, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look on how we did on the last uh, daily chart there. And you can see on the daily chart. You know, it's just kind of a mixed bag because we're below the volatility pivot. So, you know, we can get thwacked down at any time. But we're inside of the momentum pool. So, you know, we're just holding our momentum. And yeah, look, lo and behold, like from this candle that we were here back here, like a couple days ago, we've basically just been holding sideways. And so the hold momentum level, it really did its job, right? Now, uh, let's go ahead and update this because it's been a couple days and that volatility pivot may have come down. You know, some things may have shifted around over a couple days. So let's look at the new setup. And looky here. Okay. Well, the volatility pivot came way down and our momentum pool is much skinnier. So what does this tell you? Well, even though our hold momentum level is pretty much the same and we're just still going pretty much sideways, it's become a lot easier to achieve grabbing that momentum pool while being above the volatility pivot. And so we have a much higher likelihood now that if we flip this level, 26,140, okay, and then especially if we add momentum at 26,175, that there's a good chance that we could uh, try to take out this neutral point of control. And what's going to happen at the neutral point of control? Going to get above that Bollinger Band midline, potentially get embedded up there, and then we have a good chance at the bullish control zone. You know, we could get rejected at any time, right? We've seen that happen plenty of times, but we're going to have a we're going to have a good chance of trying to reach for it, right? Uh, here at the 28,832. Now, you know, getting that from all the way down here, that's that's a stretch. But I'm just saying, we're very close to where we need to be to get that momentum, to potentially get that embeddedness, right? Which would be the next step. So we're just going to be watching out for that. On the flip side, because we are under the volatility pivot, our volatility bias is to the downside currently, okay? That means anything random in the market that just spooks the market has a higher probability of pushing us to the downside. And if we lose the momentum pool, right, which is our hold momentum line, then we could easily come down to that bearish control zone at 25,404. And if we get, you know, stuck down here, then, you know, the next day could get ugly, okay? Or the next couple days could get ugly. So just be aware of these levels, Alpha Fam. Okay, I don't mark them out for nothing. But again, you know, we pivot around these levels, okay? So price action can move around them. It's when you start seeing them building structure on top of it or below it or coming back to retest it from, from one direction that you really get that kind of uh, directional movement that you can really take strong plays off of.
but it's just the nature of you know candles that they're they're going to have some chop around you know levels so can we just be chopping down here for a while yeah and then if we move up to here that's going to be a great sign if we're just chopping around down here and we move down to here and we start chopping around that's going to be a dangerous sign okay hope that makes sense let's go ahead and take a look at the two day our past two day chart and you can see what i'm talking about here right the risk for the daily you see underneath the volatility pivot underneath the momentum pool and we got kind of stuck down there we came down here and we're retesting the bottom of that easily could get pushed down to the bearish control zone and losing that could be a wallop in the chart okay because the bears will be in control fully absolute control Right now, we're just retesting the breakdown, and it looks like, you know, we're not doing it the best. But this is just the first candle. There could be a couple more candles that try to push up. We're going to find out. So let's go ahead and update the two-day to our current two-day setup. And you can see we're still below the volatility pivot. We're just inside of the momentum pool, which means that, you know, because we had this candle close here, our open is pushing up, so we're just holding our momentum. And our first goal is to get that volatility pivot at 26,000, let's just say 400. Above 26,400, and by the way, the two-day closes tomorrow, okay? So above 26,400, we're going to be in much better shape than where we are right now. And if we get above 26,504, then I'm going to say there's a really good chance that we could get above this uh, Bollinger Band midline and take out this neutral point of control, where if we chop around here, then there's a good chance that we could go for the bullish control zone. I mean, we could lose it and come back, but you know, on a momentum basis, we're going to be adding momentum to the upside because we're going to be putting in higher lows and higher highs on these smaller time frames. And so the two-day could quite quickly start looking pretty good so the one day and the two day are not ideal setups yet for a reversal in this downtrend they're not they look like they're more biased towards continuation to the downside but they are sideways right now which means we're looking for the opportunity to flip them we're looking for the opportunity for a reversal on the one day and the two day and how how do we um, you know how do we see the conditions for that? Well, we saw on the six hour right and the and the and the hourly that we have the potential for some bullishness. Okay, so that just has to continue. It could be that the lower time frames just continue into the higher time frames. Now, unfortunately, we already had that uh, weekly close, which was uh, bearish. So let's go ahead and take a look at our previous week close here. And you can see from the start of the week, we were just, you know, at the momentum pool over here and underneath the volatility pivot, right? The bottom of the momentum pool. And what happened just went down, just went down. That's the statistics for you, right? That's statistically what happens underneath the momentum pool, underneath the volatility pivot. That's your shorting opportunity. Okay, you take that level to the next level down. You get on top of it, take that level to the next level up. You flip that, you know, you just, uh, you're in the bullish control zone, so you long that, right? You take a chance. You don't have to trade on the five minute or 15 minute, you can trade on the weekly, and it's the same deal, and you would have gotten that whole candle. What was the, percent, uh, the percentage of that candle? It was you know, 6%-ish, right? So not too bit, not too shabby if you're on leverage. It did its job, okay? It did its job. This system is working. And now what can you see? Well, there's also a reason why I have the Bollinger Bands midline up here. Look at this candle. We flipped the neutral point of control, so bears aren't fully in charge yet, right? They don't have any special advantage. We lose that and we're in danger, but they don't have any special advantage. We're just kind of like neutral on the chart. 
Okay. And so bulls are trying to make an attempt to push back up the Bollinger Band midline. And if they can do that, then perhaps they can take out that momentum pool again. Now, again, this was the old setup. We had a close at the end of the week. It closed bearishly, but bears were not controlling the chart yet. That's why we have the neutral point of control, to give you that heads up. You don't have to be too scared because the bears didn't take over the neutral point of control yet. Okay. That means bulls have a very strong chance still to recover. Could, could just be a retest, you know what I mean? And so let's go ahead and see how these momentum lines have changed since that close. Well, obviously the close on the previous week is now the hold on this week, right? Because we have to hold that. Neutral point of control is pretty much the same spot. Under 25,430, we don't want to get below there. Yeah, we can, you know, we can chop it, but we don't want to be closing candles underneath there, you know, or retesting it and then just kind of hanging on. It's going to be a very dangerous thing unless you're shorting. But as long as we're just uh, swimming around, and it could take a couple weeks, as long as we're just swimming around over here, no problem. The level that we really need to take out is 28,000 on the weekly. Above 28,000, we're going to add significant momentum, and then we're going to be able to potentially take out that volatility pivot at 29,000, and that could take us to that 30,000. Okay, these are just the steps that we need to do. Just one, two, three steps to take out 30,000. 30, That's all. You know, it could take a few weeks to do that, but there's a chance. As long as we don't lose this neutral point of control, there's a chance. As long as we can recover the Bollinger Band's midline, right? Even if we get a little scary wick, as long as we recover it, right? There's a chance. And I think for this type of a setup, this is one where I do like to look at the uh, EMAs just to kind of fill in. You know, there's a big gap right here. Whenever we have big gaps, I just like to see if there's any uh, EMA that might give me some insight. And uh, one that my friend Retta, of course, just always emphasizes is the, uh, you know, he emphasizes the 10. I use the 9, and I use the 4, personally. That's my kind of signature EMA there. And so I could say somewhere around 26,800, right, is really where we want to look at, especially since we have the 200 SMA right there. I would be looking at 26.5. And I'd be looking at 26.9. If we can take out that kind of 26.5 to 26.9 on the weekly, it doesn't matter if we flash down. As long as we take out 26.5 to 26.9, just kind of hang on to that area, I'm going to be thinking, hmm, there's a strong chance for a reversal, like a front runnable position. Okay, so uh, again, the, the uh, EMAs are our friends. They can't give you a level in advance the way that the system can, but they're highly dynamic, okay? And so I can see where we're at right now, at least. I don't know where we're going to be in a week with EMAs because they're all over the place, right? But you're going to want to pay attention to them. Don't forget to turn on your EMAs. You guys should be using your EMAs. Let's take a look at the two-day, how the EMAs are looking. In fact, I can just turn off all of that stuff. On the two days, again, we're just having that squeeze to the downside. Looks like the, uh, you know, the 89 EMA is holding us up a bit. This could squeeze through. It's quite dangerous. On the daily, getting pretty nice support from the 300 and the 200, so that's pretty cool. Next support is going to be down there around that 23,000 kind of 500-ish area. Six hour. Actually looks like we have the potential for a squeeze here. See the squeeze, All right? Popped us up here. Could have a pullback, but we could potentially have a squeeze maybe up to this 26.8 level. And on the hourly, it looks like we're getting a little bit of that bounce there. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, put our hourly levels back up. 
And look at that. Look at that. We retested the bottom of the alpha momentum pool. And what did we do? We just got a nice bounce off of it. See, we had this general continuation and add and lose momentum level there. Look at that. It just bounced right off of that level. Okay, you you were with me like at the when we were looking at this in the beginning. It's just coming down, tapped it, came back up. So on the 15 minute, it looks like this. Came down, popped back up. What I tell you about these momentum pools, right? These key levels here. Very reliable for trading back and forth, guys. Okay, even here, you see it back here. It crossed it even before it existed. It, it had a very reliable play. Even right here, it had a very reliable play. And this pool wasn't even formed yet. I'm just saying, like, the system's working. We've got about uh, 15 minutes left in the hour. If we close here, it's just going to be neutral. It's just neutral. Can't really say anything about it. Again, we want to get above that uh, 26,000, above 26,100. We get above 26,100, then on the six hour, we're looking to get above 26,180 next. These are the bullish, it's the bullish path forward, right? The daily agrees with that. And then the two day is looking at 26,000, uh, let's say 420 after that, 26,500. It's kind of the front runnable one and then the kind of like official one. And then the week, as we know, right? We were looking at those EMAs, 26,000, you know, 900, 26,000. 600 we want to get between there and just kind of holding on to that level and then quickly get above 27.5 and then 28 and then 29 that's our path forward guys okay just on a momentum basis that's our path forward once we get above 29,000 you better believe that this is going to be a bullish structure okay but if we just tap 29,000 and come down Again, like the month could just dis disappoint us because the monthly has its volatility pivot all the way down at 18,000. So if we do end up dropping, you know, we could have a flash wick as low as 18,000. The weekly needs to take out 29,000. It could take a couple weeks. It needs to take out 29,000 in order to be really secure, or it has to come down over the next couple weeks, okay? Hope that makes sense. I hope you see how all these levels work together. I hope you see how the EMAs can help with our understanding. Just to visualize all the support we have right here. You can also visualize how we've been losing EMAs one after another on the way down. Just like we're not holding these levels up here. We're not holding those EMAs. I think I'm going to end it there. Right, guys, that's been your alpha for the day. Stay safe. Watch out for that uh, CPI and uh, PPI data uh, tomorrow and the day after. That's your alpha for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.